welcome back to another video and in this video I will be traveling to Iceland this will be my first international solo trip and I can't wait to bring you guys along with me and share with you all of the things that I did so stay tuned for all the upcoming videos about my trip and let's dive into part one so my flight left around about 11 o'clock so I didn't have to get to the airport too early which was nice it was a full flight and it was slightly delayed about 30 to 40 minutes due to air traffic control shortages but that was no problem because there were a lot of movies to choose from that kept me entertained while we were waiting to be cleared for takeoff so once we were clear we were able to get in line for takeoff and there was quite a long line of other planes also waiting to be cleared but once we were able to take off and get in the air we were on our way to Detroit so once we landed in Detroit I had about a five hour layover initially in Detroit, but due to our delay, it turned out to be more like four hours. I just walked around a bit and I thought their airport was so nice. This is the first time I've been to the Detroit airport and it's very nice. I only stayed in the Delta terminal, I believe, the terminal A, and they had a little express tram on the second floor that brought you all the way down to all the different gates. So I decided to eat at Max and Irma's, which is like a little burger restaurant, and you guys can see the menu there. So I ordered the turkey avocado Swiss burger, and it was good, nothing to brag about and nothing really to complain other than that I could have used some more avocado, but other than that it was just your basic turkey burger. So after that I had about another two hours to wait before my flight took off so I just found an empty gate and just kind of sat there, read my book, stretched my legs a bit because the next flight to Reykjavik from Detroit was going to be about six hours so I wanted to really make sure I stretched my legs. And then before I knew it, it was time to board so we did get a pillow, an eye mask and a blanket. Once I got to my seat, I just relaxed and watched a couple of movies. We also were served a meal on this flight. We had a choice between a fruit and cheese tray or a turkey sandwich and I decided to go with the turkey sandwich and it was pretty good again airplane food so nothing to really brag about welcome to Reykjavik where the local time is approximately 6 10 a.m. so we landed and the first thing I did was follow the signs for arrivals and that led you directly to passport control and they had two different lines depending on where your passport was from if you were part of the EU it was a bit faster for you to go through but it was a very hectic the line was very long if you can tell but after I made it through passport control I was able to exit to Iceland and made my way downstairs to grab my bags from the baggage claim. So after I grabbed my bags, I followed the signs to the transfer and bus pickup area. 
and I booked my transfer from the airport to Reykjavik with Flybus Iceland, which I highly recommend. It was very easy and affordable, but make sure you stop at the Flybus desk and show them your transfer ticket if you purchased online beforehand. So that way you can get your drop-off ticket, which you will need to get on the transfer bus at the bus terminal. And also, I highly recommend getting a Sims card, and you can get one in the same area at the store 1011, which is to the right of the Flybus desk. And it's kind of like a convenience store. They don't have the Sims cards on the shelves, but you just ask the cashier and you can get a Sims card. And they just have different options, and you can choose how many gigabytes you will need for your stay. So the Flybus buses are right outside the airport and it's about a 45 minute ride to the city and the charter bus will drop you off at the bus station. So all you have to do once you get to the bus terminal is walk straight through the building all the way to the back, which is where the smaller shuttle bus pickup location is. And from here you will board the bus that corresponds to the color of your drop off ticket. So in my case, my drop off ticket was green. So I just waited for the green bus to arrive and then I was able to board that bus with my ticket. When I booked my transfer online, I chose my drop off location to be bus stop number eight, which is why I was given the green ticket because bus stop number eight is located on that bus route. So in Reykjavik, there are certain locations where buses can and cannot pick up or drop off people. So depending on where your accommodation is, you may or may not have a bus pickup or bus stop located right in front of your accommodation. So for me, I stayed at Hostel B47, which is about a five minute walk from bus stop number eight. This was my first time ever staying in a hostel and I highly recommend this hostel. I found it to be very clean. There were a lot of different rooms and community areas where you could sit, eat, um, talk with other people. And here is a little 3D model of what the hostel looks like. And the hostel did have a full kitchen located on the first floor. And on the second floor, which is where my room was located, they had a smaller kitchen, but it only had a microwave, sink, and a refrigerator. One of the things I loved the most about the hostel was its location. It was so close to the church. It took me only about three to five minutes to get there, which I really love. And the city is very walkable. So from the church, you can walk straight down to the Rainbow Street. And from there, there are a bunch of shops and different restaurants all located around the same area. So that's basically what I did after I dropped my bags off at the hostel. I was not able to check in because I arrived earlier in the morning and check-in wasn't until the afternoon. So I just spent the day walking around the city. I went to the Harpa concert hall, which is open to the public. There is one store you can walk around and see the different items they have for sale and take some really cool pictures because the building is really beautiful with all of the glass windows. And then from the Harpa, I just walked a little bit further down the street to go to the Sun Voyager. This Sun Voyager is a sculpture that faces north and it's supposed to represent the promise of undiscovered territory, a dream of hope, progress, and freedom. After taking some time to enjoy the view at the Sun Voyager, I made my way back toward the hostel and decided to stop for something to eat. So I stopped at this restaurant called Reykjavik Street Food located on the Rainbow Street. It's a cute small little restaurant. There's an upstairs and a downstairs. 
so I decided to sit upstairs and you guys can take a look at the menu there I decided to get the fish and chips and I'm not sure if this is just an Iceland thing or maybe more common in the European countries that you pay for your food at the register on the way out of the restaurant and that they don't come up to you at the table with the bill I know in the US some restaurants do have you pay at the register after you finish eating but most of the time they come up to you at the table and you pay at the table so that was just something different I noticed but overall I did enjoy the fish and chips so after I paid the bill they gave me a chocolate bar which I thought was so nice and then I made my way back towards the hostel and checked in and this is my room there were six beds in this room and I just went straight to bed because it was such a long travel day. So that was day one in Iceland. So thank you guys so much for watching. And please stay tuned for the next episode where we have a full day exploring the city of Reykjavik.